Good day, fellow investors. The Schiller P ratio doesn't tell us that we are in a bubble, as we'll discuss later, but it gives us a clear indication on what kind of returns to expect. Let's explain. So this is the message I got from William on LinkedIn a few weeks ago, and he said that when you look at one-year returns of the Schiller cyclically adjusted P ratio, or the CAPE ratio, you don't get very much significance in the regression returns. However, I immediately asked, okay, that is one year that you looked at, look at the 10 or 15 year returns, and then we'll see if there is a clear trend important for us investors. For those that are not familiar with the CAPE ratio or the Schiller P ratio, it is a valuation measure that uses real earnings per share over a 10 year period to smooth out fluctuations in corporate profits. This is the formula for the CAPE ratio. So when you adjust valuations for that 10 year periods, where the point is to include recessions to smooth things out, you see whether a market is expensive or cheap, expensive, cheap, expensive, very cheap, very expensive, relatively cheap, expensive. And you can see those cycles in the market compared to the normal P ratio where it gives you just temporary data and is much more chopped. Further, the importance of the Schiller P ratio is as it takes 10 year average earnings, you can see here in 2009, the P ratio, the Schiller, cyclically adjusted for the cycle and was at the lowest range since the 1990s. However, the P ratio that took 2008 earnings went through the roof because earnings were very low, no matter the stock prices. So I think this is a much better indicator for long-term investors for weighing investments. And now the question is, okay, what kind of returns can we expect if we look at the Schiller price earnings ratio? The current Schiller price earnings ratio. Keep in mind, we haven't had a recession, a real one, since 2009. So this is not even cyclically adjusted. This is just the last booming decade. And the ratio is, let's say, at almost all-time highs, being all-time high during the dot-com bubble, we are now significantly high, even higher than the 1929 stock market bubble. But as we'll see later, Ray Dalio says, we are not in a bubble, but we as investors want to know what to expect going forward. These are S&P 500 earnings. Those have, let's say, not even doubled in the last 15 years, despite the fact that we have not had the recession. So imagine the cyclically adjusted CAPE ratio with one or two recessions, the situation would look even worse at these levels. So let's dig deeper, let's go forward into the 10 and 15 year returns to see what we can expect from investing in the S&P 500 at current Schiller ratios. Just for your info, this data is from the NASDAQ database and Robert Schiller's book. And now we go to the analysis with R squared that shows the fit of the thesis and the data. And we can see here that if you look at one year returns, those returns are all over the place, no matter the Schiller ratio. Thus, we cannot estimate short term returns using the Schiller ratio. The market is a voting machine in the short term, a weighing machine in the long term. We'll use here R squared that is a statistical measure that represents the proportion of the variance for a dependent variable that's explained by an independent variable or variables in a regression model. In other words, R squared shows how well the data fit the regression model. Then if we turn into five years, you can see, okay, already in five years we have a trend but still not that important. 10 years, okay, now things are getting clearer. The 
lower the PE ratio, the Schiller PE ratio, the higher will be your 10 year returns, the higher the PE ratio, the lower will be your 10 year average SAP 500 return. And if we take 15 years, the trend there is pretty clear. So if the Schiller P ratio is low, the opposite of now, you can make a lot of money by investing in the SAP 500. If the Schiller P ratio is high as it is now, you can make some money by investing over the long term. Usually stocks go up over the long term, but don't expect miracles. And this is in line with the Benjamin Graham indication that the market in the short term is a voting machine and in the long term it is a weighing machine because it weighs the fundamentals sooner or later. Thus voting, voting and then over a decade we have weighing where fundamentals should sooner or later start mattering. Now when those start mattering isn't that important at all because if at some point fundamentals are important, not in the current market, but then it can be a rude awakening for many, many investors out there. There was this letter from Ray Dalio on LinkedIn. I suggest you subscribe to his LinkedIn because he always shows very, very interesting data. And I have summarized what he is saying these are his bubble factors and for now he doesn't see the current environment as a bubble. Okay, higher prices to value, the market is a little bit frothy, someone frothy with unsustainable long-term growth expectations and conditions. We discussed that with earnings going higher and higher projected but reality is not such. Hot markets, new and naive buyers, somewhat frothy, no crazy bullish sentiment, even if I would say 10% per year is a bullish sentiment, not much high margin activity and no high forward investing into businesses or something like that. But the stock prices keep going higher. This is his measure and we are not in bubble territory like the roaring 20s and 2000s, maybe the nifty 50 of the 60s. But if I compare to 2007, we are not far from 2007 and returns there going forward were not great at all. So I don't know what will happen with the SAP 500. I suspect low single digit returns going forward with significant ups and downs depending on recessions, etc. But the risk and reward isn't attractive at this moment. And of course, it would be better to buy it at a lower rate. But you would say, Sven, where can we find in these environments of crazy valuations such cheap situations to make a lot of money? Well, when the CAPE ratio was below 15, here is the return. This is, what is this? Almost a 7x. It was 666 the low in 2009. And what does this mean for investors? The first thing is when I look at Bloomberg, everyone is talking about the election, always short term, short term, short term. I don't know who will win the election. It's likely going to be a very old person, but no talking about old and dead person, oh, sorry, old persons badly. But for me, as an investor, it doesn't really matter. What matters is weighing because over your life investing cycle, this is what brings you the long-term compounded returns. And from now, if you buy expensive, you will not get great compounding returns. On the other hand, if we look at Asia, Chinese stocks now, those are at historically low valuations, P ratios of 10, 11, 9, 8. And if we look at where China is when it comes to equity ownership, just 4% of household assets is in those markets. And if they start gambling again, like they like doing with stocks, when stocks go up, not when stocks go down, that 
with the low valuation could really shoot up a market like the Chinese market and then you get to great returns. In the meantime, while you wait, the dividend yields are higher than bond yields. So that's also a benefit of buying cheaper. If you want to see what I do, check my research platform. 40% of the model portfolio there is invested in China. You have the research thesis. See how it fits you.